just want to give people a place to go to get information. I want them to enjoy learning about Qi and how it's easy to learn about it and affect change in your own life. So Qi Pro is here for the curious seekers and for the professionals looking to get ahead. It's the bottom line. I want to empower people with information because the one thing that can't be taken from you is your knowledge. All right, so you guys are here listening. I'm so excited to be here. It's Sam Plovey from Geology Pro, and today we're going to talk all about 2019. And I'm going to help share some feng shui tips and some astrology information that helps you understand if this is your big year. And I have with me today the very clever David. <laughs> yes, thank you so much for having me on. This was uh, this is definitely going to be an interesting one. I remember sending that uh, email and uh, <laughs> saying this will be an interesting one because I am definitely not Shelby. <laughs> different personalities. Absolutely. I know that because I've got your birth chart. I know exactly. Actually, that, that actually scared me right there. I that, know. When you Paul, said that in the email, you have I, my birth chart. What does I that know, mean? I, I, I know everything. I've told you I am the goddess of all things. Um, well, actually, in our world, we always pull up people's birth information and work out of their charts. So I had already checked out you, Shelby, and Clinton um, to see how we would melt. So I know exactly how I work with all three of you. So it helps me understand what you need. So when we look at astrology charts, it helps me understand um, how to work with you, what it is you need from me, because David uh, Shelby responds to me in a different way than how you do. Well, you have a leg up on the competition I do. in that perspective because you, uh, you know how to deal with different personalities. Well, it's something that's used a lot, actually, um, we, for staff evaluations when people are hiring staff and just melding staff together in a business. I do that quite a bit, actually. Who's going to work with who? Because you can really have great people. Right? I can really see how that's going to work in a uh, in a business environment. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's very useful to know, and it's useful for everyone to know. Right? Very good information. So, so I was thinking, and you said you didn't know much about what I do, and there's a lot I do, but I thought, well, why don't we talk about 2019? Everybody kind of looks ahead and says, well, is it going to be my year? I'm I'm born year of the ox, or I'm born year of the the, the dog, or something. And also, my house faces north, so what does that mean to me? And there's a lot of confusion, so I made a very handy dandy little booklet to give out to everyone, so they can get all that information. Because even if you listen to my voice here, there's so much more to say. And so what is that, that called? It's called the Feng Shui Guide, and it's in Chiology Pro on the website. So all you have to do is go there, www.chiologypro.com. And you create a free membership and on your dash, you can get this new um, handbook and just download it, keep it on your computer. And it's got so much information tucked in there. The free so. guide to 2019. And that's what we are yes. diving into today. We are. Wonderful. I'm excited and uh, a little bit scared. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, why don't we break it down to some basics? So let's, let's look at feng shui first. I'm curious. What do, you, what do you think feng shui is or what do you know of feng shui? So when I hear... Uh, how do you pronounce it? Feng shui. Feng, so no, feng shui. Feng so shui. think of think of bok. Yeah, I heard bok about shui. feng shui. Bok feng shui. Okay. Bok choy feng shui. So feng shui. Okay. Feng shui is kind of the North American way of saying it. Yes. Yeah. But my masters are Asian, and the Mandarin way is more shui. So it's feng. So F E N G, but it's feng. Like there's a yep. U in there. Shui is S H U I. So it looks like shui or shui or something. It's shui, like shui. shui. Okay, so feng shui. like bok choy, yeah. I like that. I, I think I can really remember I bok choy. That, and I always tell people it, it doesn't really matter how you say it. It's more important you understand what it is. How okay. you say it doesn't matter. I like it. Well, let's see if I understand what it is. So my knowledge comes mostly from movies, right. um, TV shows, things like that, where when you hear about uh, feng shui, it's somebody coming in or somebody reading about it on the internet and tweaking their their room or their environment or their house or an area in their house according to these uh, rules of feng shui to add like good karma or good chi or I don't I don't know the official terms but to, to increase positivity and good things in their life actually, and attract better things. Actually, that's very good. You're hired as an assistant. That's Wonderful. Actually, that's actually very, very good <laughs> because the answer I often get is, well, it's it's the art of furniture placement or, or it's the art of um, finding your career corner or your, your wealth corner. And I always joke and say, your couch can be any color you want it to be and there are no corners in feng shui. Uh, the only corners are in your house, so of the four corners of your actual building. So you are right. Feng shui is understanding how the environment affects you. That's all it is. So in its ancient text, and it's a very, very, very old art. It's to do with landforms. It's to do with actual mountains, rivers, lakes, oceans, 
um, and the actual forms around that people are in. And it was chosen as a yin, yin form, which means for the dead. So it was grave sites were picked. So it's very important over in Asia and in lots of cultures that you bury your ancestors in the right place so they can bestow their heritage and their lineage correctly to the new generation. So that's kind of where it began. But now it's more about modern day. So it's more about the houses. And so mountains become houses and buildings. Water become roadways. So because we don't all live on a lake, we don't have an oceanfront property, and we don't live on a mountain with no houses around, right? This is modern day world. We live in cities. We don't have, nothing is perfect. So it's understanding the environment around you and how it affects you. What I like to explain it as is you're actually all feng shui enthusiasts anyway. You're little professionals in the making. You just don't know it. You get up in the morning. You look out of the window. It's raining. And you think, oh, look at that. It's raining. I've got to put my raincoat on. I've got to get an umbrella or I'm going to get wet. So you've made an assessment of what the environment is and you've mediated. You've made an adjustment to protect you. It's the same thing in your home. We can, a person like myself, we look at a building, whether it's a home or a company, and we can look and see where it's raining. So that area needs an umbrella, metaphysically speaking. We can look and see where it's really hot. Oh, that area needs sunscreen. So yeah, I'm being a little bit flippant. Yeah. But the point is, it's just assessing the environment of what's there. So if we take it into the real sense, you are right. Chi is life's breath. It's the energy we work with. It's why sometimes you you may find in your own home, there's a certain place in your house you go sit. If you've got to think something through, you just end up on that chair in that part of the kitchen thinking stuff through. It's because your body has instinctively attached to the chi that's there because it's good for you. So in a home, we just look at, we feng shui gives us a map of that chi and we can see where the good stuff is and you can spend more time and we can see where the bad stuff is and you shouldn't spend so much time. And then someone like myself, I come in and I can help mediate because you can't, if your master bedroom or your kitchen's in a place that's not so positive, you can't not use it, right? You have to cook dinner, you have to go to sleep. So then we mediate, then sometimes we do bring in color. That's when you'll see us, but that's kind of like an, an after effect. It's we can't change what's there. So how do we tweak it to make it better? To almost like trick it into being in a different... D redirect its flow. Redirect so its with, flow. With I like chi, yeah, with wait, chi, yeah. we can't control it. It's way bigger than us. The the world, the, the universe, way bigger than us. So you can't control chi. That's a big mis misconception out there. We just redirect it. It's like I, I explained it to a client one day. I said, it's like your two-year-old has a pack of crayons and you let them loose in the living room with your white curtains you know what's going to happen. So how do you redirect his energy? You put him in another room, you give him an easel, and you get him to color all over the easel, right? It's just, you can't stop him from doing what he's going to do. So you redirect it in a positive way. I like that a lot. Now, yeah. on the on the aspect of chi, you did mention that some people will commonly uh, be attracted to a certain place where they need go when they need to think. Do you, do you think that people are commonly attracted to the good parts of the house, like you said, where they where there is good flowing chi and they often go there, whether it's the kitchen or master bedroom or bathroom or desk or wherever it is? Mostly yes. Really good question, by the way. Mostly yes. But do you know who's really good at finding good chi? Um, cats and dogs and children. Cats and dogs, really. Right? You've heard people, you know, you've probably been to a friend's home and they've got children maybe and everyone, you know, she's in the kitchen trying to make dinner and get stuff ready and the little two, the little four-year-old is playing right by her feet. And she's like, oh my God, I made this whole playroom for little Johnny and he never plays in it, but he's always in the kitchen under my feet. Yes, that child might want to be near mum, but there's a good chance that child knows where the good part of the house is. Children are unbiased. They're, un, they're natural. We've changed our way of thinking because we, we conform to what we're told as we grow up, right? We, we, we're taught things in school, we're taught how things should be, and we, we, we behave. A child doesn't really behave. A child does what comes naturally. So if I'm in a home working somewhere and I can't define the chart, maybe it's a bit tricky, I will watch the children and the dogs, uh, or animals, I should say, because they know where things are. They naturally go. Interesting. And, but people do. The, the challenge with people connecting with chi in the home Sometimes if they're in a bad place, um, it's a negative period of time in their life, they're at a down point, so they're naturally going to connect with down energy. 
So then I've got to interrupt that. Like for a good example, I've got a young couple I'm working with and they're trying to buy a house, but they're, they're not in a great house right now. So they keep picking the same thing. So I kind of have to step in and say, no, you narrow down the search. I will pick the house or I'll preview it and say, yeah, go look at this one because you, you will connect with what you know. And you're it's unbiased. And I'm unbiased. Yeah. So that's the good thing. I'm coming in with a, yep, nope, not the right house. Same thing with um, boyfriends. I work with, when I'm working with people on their astrology chart, they're like, oh, I just, I always fall for this type of guy. And I'm like, right, we have to break that cycle. But, but you do it because you're comfortable. So when you meet the guy somewhere, you think, oh, he's the one, because you get that sense of knowing, but it's not the right knowing. Do, they find, do you find that uh, clients go back to things that are common to them even after you've tried to break the cycle and, and set up new ground? Occasionally, but if we've been... Um, a Pretty much all my clients stay with me. Once I, I've got very loyal clients, once they come in, they stay for years and years for updates and all sorts of things. Because once they've felt good chi, once we've mediated where they are and accented, accentuated the positive and downplayed the negative, they feel it. It's like we're raising your vibrational level. We're raising your level of awareness. And then they notice, they'll, I'll often get little text messages like, oh my God, I, I get what you mean. I went to so-and-so's house and it's gorgeous. Well, I didn't like it. I'm like, yeah, no, neither do I. <laughs> it's, it should be on a magazine, but it's not right. Uh, we've all done it. You've probably walked into homes that are, you know, they're not, they're not on, on a magazine. They're not perfect, but you like it. You're comfortable. Everyone yeah. hangs out there. That's where everyone goes for pizza and coffee and all those things. So that's what it is. Do you find that's chi? Can, can people, like can a person expel chi or is chi just uh, flowing through everything? Because Jeez. because I find sorry just to elaborate on no, that question because when you mention even if the home's not in a magazine sometimes people are attracted to it they always want to be there do you find that that could be maybe because they're attracted to the chi from the person? Well, the inter is big question there. So first of all, a person does emanate chi, and the biggest way to know that is you'll you'll feel it. you know you've got friends where you're just energized when you're around them um, even when they're having a bad day they're just jokey they're fun and you think oh god I so love hanging out with that person they always make me feel good they have good chi and you. Usually that will be given away by their eyes. So someone could have a bunch of acne. They could be having a really bad hair day, right? There's a lot of things that gain 20 pounds. Like a few things could be going on in their life. But if you look at their eyes and their eyes are vibrant and their spirit is vibrant, that's good chi. So that's the person part. But when it comes to people attra attaching to a home, it's not actually people choosing the home. The home chooses you. The home connects with you. It's like a little beacon. It sends out a beacon in it. And when you – people know they walk up to a house and they just say, oh, I, I know. This is the one. This is home. Occasionally it's the bad connection. Mostly it's a good connection. My old house is a good example. Actually, the new one we just built. The old house, we moved here 20-odd years ago. And we were looking for a house, couldn't find one. And every morning I'd drop my son at school, had my daughter in the car seat, and I'd drive around this neighborhood that we liked. And nothing was ever for sale. We'd done a flyer drop. We had realtors working for us. Nothing was happening. But we always parked in front of this one house. It was just the staging point. Just park there, pull out the listings, make my note, where am I going? One day my husband's with me and, uh, and I said, oh, this is really getting ridiculous. We have to find a house. And he said, I think we should start knocking on doors. He said, next house we see we like, let's knock on a door. And I just turned to him and I said, well, I'm going to knock on this one because we park outside of this house every, every day, yeah. every time. So I walked up there and knocked on the door and I'm thinking, this could go bad. <laughs> and, uh, and they opened the door and they said, oh, yeah, we're thinking of selling. And that was our house. And we no bought way. it. No way. Yeah, we wow. bought it. See, th and this is where... So the house drew me to it is my point. The house drew me to it. And this is where coincidence just kind of falls out of the equation. It's no yeah. longer coincidence. No. Right? It, it's, it's, it's something that's almost like predetermined or meant to be. Invisible threads. The yeah. universe has a – we're invisible all connected. Threads, like They're that. invisible threads. Whether, whether you believe in feng shui or not, it works and it's there. So it's just something that's all around us. And astrology, there are invisible threads that, that – connect us. With our new home, we went, you know, my husband set me a task to find us a new home. And I'm like, oh, great. With the knowledge I know, that's really difficult, right? Because it's personal now. It's my family, my children, my home, my own money. And I found our house months before we moved. And then my husband came and he didn't connect to it right away. And then we had to look, oh, it took three months looking at other houses. We ended up right back at the one I picked. And I'm like, okay, I had to wait for him to come. And now he, he's just so, so happy and life is just so, so great. So I knew and I have a funny story about that. So I live at a place called Predator Ridge. And one of the days I was out there, my husband was away. And 
I really felt like, oh, we have to make this happen. Like we're, we're at go time. And I knew our other house had to be sold. It was the time to sell our house to get the maximum money for it. So I was kind of pushing my husband a bit and he was, he was resisting a little bit because he wanted to make a good decision financially, right? Being responsible for the family. And I took some pictures of the house and I sent them to a colleague in Spain because I said, I think I'm biased. I think I need another set of eyes. Can you give me your opinion on this house? Because I think I want it too much now and I've clouded my judgment, my own expertise. And as I'm walk, as I'm driving away, I thought, God, if, just, if the universe would just send me a sign that this is supposed to be my house. And I'm a very visual person, very spiritual. And I get home and I happen to open up my laptop, clicked on my emails and first email that pops in was a newsletter from Predator Ridge. I'd forgotten. I'd signed up for it. And, it's, and the headline was, you belong here. And I was like, okay, <laughs> okay. And it was just doesn't about, you get, know, it, it was selling their house. more blatant than and that, I thought, hey? There you go. Thanks, universe. So, and <laughs> invisible I sh- threads. Invisible threads. And I want to share that because if you raise your vibrational level and open up your mind, if you put the question out to the universe, it will answer. Yeah, and I've had, I've had a few moments like that myself. I bet where, you have, and yeah. It's uh, it is interesting because I and and part of it I think is definitely tapping in into obviously those invisible threads. The other part is I just think you find what you're looking for. You like you said yep. you you tap into that vibration of what you're looking for, and that allows you to see those. You will be led to where you're supposed to be. It just the challenge is it doesn't happen in the timeline that maybe you want it to. So some people you know, and I'm not a lover of the word. I deserve something or I, I should have that. I'm entitled to that. No, no, no. Hard work. Got to get it. But the challenge we have as people is we sometimes want everything now. Well, sometimes now isn't the right time. So we, it's timing. So if you open yourself up, it will be shown what you're supposed to do. Sometimes, you know, it could have been last year that it wasn't the right time to move. Because of what I know, I knew it was. It was the best thing for us. But other people, I've had to say to them, actually, no, you need to just sit tight and ride this little rough patch out and look for a house next year. It's not the year. And if yeah. it's not the right, if it's not the right time, like you said, it it will it will make sense later on when you look back and you're like, oh, that's why it wasn't the right time, right? Yes. It, all, it all makes sense. And that's what I find so interesting. I was having this conversation with my mom yesterday too about how, in in our physical world, in in humanity, the the world we live in on this earth, time is linear. Right. In other dimensions and other. Uh, in spirituality in general, in in exactly. afterlives or whatever it yep. is, there is no time. They can see things that we can't, and it's yep. it it doesn't work this in the same linear past, present, future. Yeah, it's cyclic, it's circular, it's on different levels. And the more you don't have to be super spiritual to believe in feng shui because it's not a religion. It's actually a science base. It's helpful. It's easier to accept if you are more open. If a person's more open, it's way easier to, to then implement. I mean, one of the standing jokes of in our industry is that if someone says, well, I don't believe in feng shui, technically, I could give you something bad to do in your home, you'd feel it. So because sometimes we do something in someone's home and they say, oh, yeah, no, I did get that job and that these things are happening and everything's, you know, moving along, progressing really well. But that's because I did a resume and I went to a recruiter and I did this and we're like, and I've just learned to say, okay. Because I sit back because eventually they'll realize it's what we did. But the best way to prove feng shui is to do something bad. I, I wouldn't do it, it, is to activate something negative and then the person will feel it and say, why on earth did that happen? I'll say, that's why it happened. So now let's untweak that. Let's untap that meridian and you won't have that issue. I would never do it, but I know people that have. Um, so then to summarize feng shui. Feng shui. Very good. Yes. Very yes, well done. I got it. Um, <laughs> To summarize then, for myself moving forward, mm. feng shui is the art of tapping into uh, the different levels of good chi and basically maximizing your chi flow in the household, in the environment that you're in. Yes, very good. Think of it like Wi-Fi. You know, right? You, you've you set up your, all best your stuff signal. in your house. Yeah, you, where do you go to the best signal when you've got to do stuff. That's what feng shui is. You can't avoid that area that has a weak signal. It's not a bad area. It just doesn't have a strong signal. And or it might be a signal that's useful to someone else, but not for not to you. It's very personalized. So yeah, we're just tapping into the strongest signal, and then we'll get the best results. Wonderful. Yeah. So that feng shui is the first step to 2019 guide to success. It what is. It means. So well, because I don't know your home, David, mm-hmm. and for you listening out there, I, I don't know your home either. I'd love to, but I don't know what it is. So I can't just say, ah, oh, well. 
in the northwest, around, yeah. if your house faces north, this is really, really good. And if it faces west, it's really, really bad. It's, it's more than that. However, there is one layer that is useful for anyone. It is a little bit generic. So I'm going to back up to feng shui for a second. Feng shui, let's say house. Let's not talk business for a second, but a house with a family in it. Feng shui, your house becomes like a, a boardroom. And there are eight compass directions, okay? North, east, southwest, northwest, southeast, all of that. They're the same in to you as they are to me. It's no different because people think it's, it's a little bit different. It's not. Same directions. So you've got eight compass points. So in your home, you will have eight directions, right? Somewhere there's going to be a north. Somewhere there's going to be a west and a, and a southeast. So each direction brings someone to you that year. Your house becomes like a boardroom. And eight new board members come into your house every year. Now, there's already an existing board set, um, board member set there who are defining the energy from when the house was built. But we're just talking annual for the moment. So these annual board members are arrive, and one's going to be in charge of health. One's in charge of HR. One's in charge of payroll. They all have a job to do, and they will settle in different locations each year. They kind of shuffle each year. They will affect you. And that's what I put in the guide. I did a little visual on how to divide your house, kind of like a tic-tac-toe chart, which isn't completely correct. We'd almost cut it up into a pie. It's like slicing a pie into eight sections. And we can look at those who, what energy is coming in on each section. And that will affect you irregardless of what is happening in your, in your base chart. So like last year, for example, I knew to sell my home because I had something at my front door that many people are very scared of. It's called the Emperor. It's called Star 5. So these board of directors, we're going to call them stars. And they're stars one through eight. And I had one that came to my front door that was Star 5. So everyone was all up in arms in my industry. And, and so I said, oh, my God, Sam's going to have a terrible year. I knew that wasn't going to be the case because it came to something in my house that added up um, that amplified something and it amplified my wealth. So I knew it was the time to sell our house We'd get the most money we could for it. And it would help me be strong and take the business further. So on a personal level, I, I was selling my house. On a business level, I was doing tons of things with Sproring Creative because I knew it was time to go big. It's time to go big or go home. So like grammar, there's exceptions to every rule. There's exceptions to every rule. And that's why sometimes it can be a little bit dangerous when people go on the internet and search stuff because they're like, oh, my God, my house faces north. That means I'm going to die. No. And I just – it's funny. I just used a program – with someone the other day, they had a software program up and mine was down. So I thought, oh, I'll go check this one out. And it's it's a very good program. But if you don't know what I know, so I thought, oh, I'll put my house in there. So I put my house in there and it comes out with an apparent reading on my house done by a computer, a set of rules. You can't do that. So I read I read the new set of rules for my new house. And if if anyone else but me was reading it, they would run for the hills and panic because it looked so bad. But it wasn't the full picture. But so you've got to be very careful with what you read. You need to know the full details, but the annual part is handy. So I'm just looking at the guide. I just sort of pulled up the guide on my computer here, and I'll give you an example of what I mean. So in 2019, um, we can divide the house up, and we can explain that the wealth sector, there are two of them in a sense. One of them is in the center of the home, and one of them is in the northwest for 2019. So those two together, one is current wealth in the center of a home, Northwest is the actual future wealth. So when something's in the center of the home, it means that it's on everyone's mind. So this year, everyone's rethinking their finances. They're sort of reassessing where they are financially and what they're going to do and do they have the foundation. And then if you were it's like in your home, say you wanted to grow your wealth, and I don't know your home, but you could go to the Northwest sector and just make sure that sector of your home is really tidy and clear because Entering from the Northwest is the board member who's coming in with new ideas on how to make money. So make him comfortable, right? These board members are coming into your home and they're going to sit around a table and they're going to discuss your life. So make them comfortable. Make sure all the good players are in their position and they have what they need. Does, does that sort of make sense? Are we talking metaphysical board members? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Yes. I'm sorry. I could, okay. see, I could see the look on your face. I'm thinking, okay. I'm like, I'm like I know. who's coming into my home? <laughs> I know. No, we're talking energy. Okay. So I've, I've energetic board members. Energe I've turned them into board members. As I find it's a good analogy Easier for people. With, yeah, good analogy. Your house Easier is a explain. meeting point for energy, and those eight energies are coming in every year, and they have a job to do. Like we've got um, illness in the northeast, so we know that in the northeast, if you've got, if the if you went home today and looked at your house, and in the northeast northeast part of your property in your house was 
you've stored your garbage there. You've got a dead tree there. You've got a bunch of junk there. And then say the northeast of your house is the um, storage room and it's really messy. You are more likely to get ill this year because the energy that governs health and wellness, but sickness, is coming in from that area and it's coming in over crappy stuff. So it's going to get grumpy. It's like, think of walking to your front door in your house and your path is clear. You walk in, you open your door, you feel good. You just walked home. Now, go back. Now walk to your house, you've got to sidestep the recycling that fell over. Then the tra- you've got to step over the trash can that fell over and it's got stuff all over the way. By the time you turn the key in the door, you're thinking, God damn it, you know, it's such a mess here and I'm, you're grouchy. Same thing. The energy's coming to your home. If it arrives to you grouchy, it's going to do grouchy things. It really is that simple. So with the, with the, when you say northeast, does every property have a different northeast or are we talking from a compass perspective? compass perspective so it's very easy so that's why the guide is really important so i do want you to go and download that guide very important because there's a visual and i'm i'm a visual person so once you see it you'll get it and so we don't know the the natal chart of the home so the natal chart is like a birth chart so when the house is built the degree it faces so it's not a case of does it face north does it face north at 360 degrees or does it face north at 15 degrees both are north but they're slightly different. So when I go and I take this measurement of where the house is facing, and then that allows me to create um, a numbers chart, like a binary code. And that binary code is what a feng shui consultant reads to tell you what's going on in that house. But annually, for, the, for those of you that don't have a SAM, you know, I'm not in your life yet, um, annually you can look at where the annual energies are coming in, and that just gives you an indication. It's better to have it done properly, but at least you can do something. So that's why I put these guides out every year so that at least people have something. But you should actually do the proper thing. It's like saying I could guess, are you 22, 27? I could do all this guessing. I need to actually know how old you are. I need your actual birth chart to be able to know you. Which Same you with obviously the house. have. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do. So the feng shui is actually very difficult. I do have a lot of sympathy for people when they get confused on what's out there because it's not one size fits all. You can't say... This is where my career corner is. No, we could say that's the person who's going to help you with career that year from the annual, but we need to actually work out the actual natal chart, the actual code of the home. It's like a code. Okay, it really is like a code. When you see it, I don't think I brought one in. Um, I'll have to have a look in a second. It's like a set of numbers. We've cut that house up into a, a pie and each triangle pie piece has a bunch of numbers in it. I can read those numbers. It really is like a science. Then, it is a science. And that's the bit I want people to understand. It's it's not this I feel things or I see things. I yeah. see dead people. I, I see the I, I see the chi. No, yes. you're – No, don't see – yeah, I don't now see is, any of the chi. Now, does Fibonacci play into it at all? I think so. Yeah, okay. I think it does. I think it I'm does. I'm curious. When you say triangles and numbers, that's the first thing I think about because yeah. they do say you can see the Fibonacci everywhere if you look close enough. I right? believe – I do believe right? it's so in there, yeah. No, so that is uh, – that's definitely neat. So I guess the biggest takeaway from just our little chat here is that, yes, there are things you can do on your own listening, but I really do advise people, if you've got – some challenges in your life. If things aren't going quite how you know they could be, you you just seem to be walking upstream constantly, hire someone to come in and look at your house. Okay, there's all different price points. So you don't have to be a a millionaire to do this. And professionals like myself, we help people. When people come in, I have an intake form, just like many other professionals. Once I've started evaluating the home, I know they can't pay me, right? So I make a deposit so it makes it business. We go from there because my point is to help people. Because one day they will have money. Maybe they'll pay me something. That's okay. Do the right thing. But if you can, hire someone to help you because it can change It can change your life because you don't know where the problem is, but we can see where the problem is. Absolutely. And once we've identified it, you can fix it. No, and right? there's uh, – uh, I've, I've, I've learned recently that there are a lot of things that you can't explain and yes. how they work and everything, yep. but they do. They do. And, and as long as they work, it doesn't matter how they work. It yeah. just matters that they do. I think there's a very famous person. I'm not going to give light to his name here because he's, he's very politically and p- people don't like him. <laughs> but he said something once, and it's very true. And he said, I don't need to know how feng shui. I don't need to know what feng shui is. I just know that it works. It makes me money. Okay. Now, he's rather ruthless, ruthless when he said that. But my point is, you don't actually need to know what I know. All you need to do is know me. 
and then um, I can help you understand that and, and change things. And the same for you listening. If you have a problem, reach out to someone. And that's the other thing we do on Geology Pro too. We have a directory of professionals. Go find one. Find Go one find on one that, that fits yourself. your budget and that you connect with because we're all a little bit different. I'm a bit cheeky. I'm a bit funny. But I'm very serious about what I do. And um, just find a professional that helps you because that's the goal. That's what I'm trying to give everyone is information and, and help. So let's go back because you said the, the wealth is in the northwest corner in 2019. Fu future wealth. Current wealth is in the center. It's Current in the core of the home. The future wealth is in the northwest. And sickness is in the northeast. Any other yeah. sections that we should highly think about in 2019? A good one would be the east. We've got career in the east. And the so east. that's another area to keep clear and just sometimes go work there a little bit. Make a few phone calls from there because people that can help you with career is going to be in the east. And another one to avoid or be be careful with is in the south. There is a lot of bickering and arguing there. So just if you've got to have an important conversation with a loved one and you've just taken a minute to quickly work out where the south is in your home, don't go there. <laughs> go into the east or maybe the west or the east or the uh, maybe the, the northwest. Go there and have that conversation. Okay. So each one, and like I said, I've, I've sort of marked them on the on the guide so people can see. Wonderful. Does this yeah. change every single year? Yes, it does. So Drastically, or is it usually little tweaks? No, it's a complete shift. It is a complete. It's shift. a complete shift. So your your home, the function of your home, doesn't change once it once your house is built. It captures the chi at that time that it's at lockup stage. So windows are on, roof is on, doors are locked. Once you've sort of made it airtight, the chi has been captured. The chi that was just flowing around on the mountains and everything has been captured in that home, and a map has been created. You can't see it, but I can come in and I can I can see it and see that map. So that map is permanent. Every year, this board of directors comes in. I was just explaining it to someone here at Sproin yesterday, actually, and I said, think of it like an auditor team. The auditor team are coming in, and they're going to put themselves in different areas, and they're going to audit each department and either help it or hurt it. Mm. So it, it, all, it all layers. So I do advise getting help with an annual update, but this is a good start. It's a very good start. Are there any places that, because you did mention, obviously, illness being in the in the north, the northeast, like mm -hmm. you want to obviously keep that clean, you said, so it doesn't have to juggle through that. Are there any ha areas of the property that you should keep messy? And no. for what reason? No, never messy. Feng Shui okay. never responds to clutter. Okay. Um, it has a direct result. Like, so clear um, organization. Clear always. organization. Yep. You don't have to have um, a house that's like HGTV. It doesn't need perfection. It doesn't need expensive things, but it does need to be organized. It does need to be tidy. I think tidy is the best word. Tidy, tidy. Is, a, tidy is a good word. Yeah, because organized can be a little bit obsessive, but tidy. One of the biggest things I'll see is... I, I don't actually work with hoarders. I've been hired, but I refuse to work with them because they're too, in a sense, they're too far gone and they're beyond my capabilities. They actually need someone who can help them on a different level, right? So I will not go into homes. I It's usually, psychological first and then they need They second. need other help. Yeah, exactly. So Because I, I could go in there and just say, right, if they, if they let me, which they probably wouldn't, I could clean it out and sort it out, but they're not ready. So within a few months, it would be back to where it was. So tidiness is really important, a place for everything and everything in its place. So the energy, just like we said about you walking to your front door, if you've got to walk over a pile of garbage, you can't help but start to feel grouchy. Do that every day. It's going to affect you. Even though you have a very positive demeanor and you're very upbeat and you're very happy, it's going to wear you down over time. Feng shui is good that way. And I guess we could say bad that way. It, it doesn't go away. It's there and it will affect you. If you stand in the rain for a long time, you're going to get wet, right? If you stay in a place where there's negative energy and it's all cluttered, you're going to feel it. Biggest one that I've noticed is cluttered hallways, which is kind of rare, actually. But if there's very cluttered hallways, people are stacking books and magazines and, you know, we're kind of leaning towards hoarding a little bit there. That's going to usually directly relate you to your arteries. So clogging, clogging of the, clogging arteries, of yeah. the what is the core hallways in your body? Arteries. Interesting. So everything in your home will relate to your body. Every compass direction relates to a body point. Hmm. So everything is related. What is the bedroom? Um, it's not a case of bedroom. It's where it is. Oh, I see. <clears throat> it's where it is. So it's not because the south relates to the heart and the eyes. The east relates to so the internal organs, the kidneys and things like that. So everything relates to something. So that's where the layering comes in. And that's where it's a bit tricky. So that's, that's technical. And that would be maybe a great discussion for another day. And I could have a document ready, because I always like to support our discussions with a document. So people have a takeaway. I, I, no, I love that. I yeah, that gonna, one's a bit more I'm technical for the pros. And we will, we will do that. Yeah. We will do the pros for sure. We will, we will touch into that. But 
best thing to do is remove dead tree. You know, big no-brainers. Don't have dead trees around your property. Don't have dead shrubs. I'm not a lover of cacti in a large amount. They usually do create problems with the eyes or the heart in some way. Mm. Not a lover of amethyst. So feng shui doesn't really involve crystals. Some people like to layer it with crystals, but you got to be very careful. So as, as a rule, just keep things tidy, keep things bright, and keep things free-flowing. Okay? So, I mean, I was just thinking, look at this room. It's quite a tight room that we're in today, David. If we were moving around a lot, guarantee we'd start bumping our hips and our legs on the corners of the table. It's just a natural thing. That will affect us. Same thing in a home. Yeah. So you just keep it clear. I mean, have you ever have you ever hit your hip on, on oh, yeah. the corner of something? It feels like you've been shot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, yeah. It's, so uh, it, it it's not will pleasant. have an effect. So everything starts at home. Everything starts at home. Interesting. No, I, li- I, like, that, uh, I like that tidy a lot. Now... In the 2019 guide, we also talk about a little bit more about the signs. The astrology? Yes. Yes. That's always everyone's favorite because let's so face it. there are different it. forms of astrology, right? Like the one there that are. most people are con- or know about is obviously the astrology with the with the stars, like the Capricorn, the, the Taurus, the Virgo. Yeah. Um, so that's Western astrology. Western. Okay. Yeah. So Western astrology really based on the month. And I don't, I'm not highly trained in Western astrology. I love it. I'm up, I'm up there with everyone else ordering my coffee, reading that newspaper horoscope. And it's like, that's my day. Yeah. I love it. So I'm all, I'm all for that. So what, what I do and what a lot of the professionals on Geology Pro do is Chinese astrology. So it's similar. It does include the month, but it initially starts on your year. So the year of your birth becomes important, then the month, then the day, then the hour. So earlier when we were getting ready, you asked me something about your birth date. Yes. And you said, oh, yeah, no, because I'm a... What Tiger, what you said? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I remember the Chinese restaurants... Or I love the Chinese place restaurant, mats. the placemats, yeah, right? I yeah. look and I'm like, I'm the tiger, right? Yeah, no, you're not. No, you're not. No, I'm not. No, you're not. Okay. Because you're born in January. Yes. Right? January. I'm not going to give you birthday, but you were born in January. Why not? So, well, no, it's probably well, it's up to you. It's private. <laughs> Throw it out there. I'm fine with that. <laughs> All right. Let's discuss his chart. Um, well, you are born January 7th, 1998. Okay? Yes. So, great birthday. But because you're born in January, you actually belong to the year before. Because the Chinese calendar is a solar calendar, and the solar year starts around February 4th. The Chinese New Year. China, y- yes, but Chinese New Year is the celebration. So there is, a, there is a date when the year changes, and there's a date when the celebrations happen. They're not always the same. Oh. So I do, I do have a blog on that on Geology Pro about what is the date for Chinese New Year, because it changes. So the year, so think of the Gregorian calendar, which is the one we all know. January, February, March, right? Starts on January 1st, ends December 31st. Nice, clean, simple. Well, that was created many years ago by someone just to make life simpler, so they thought. It's not the real calendar. The farmer's almanac is far more accurate because it works with the sun and the moon and the, and the gravity, you know, the, the planets, the alignments. So that actually is what controls our environment when the sun rises and sun sets. So it's a solar calendar. So the the Chinese New Year, the celebrations, that is the lunar New Year. That's to do with the the full moon. I think it's the second full moon after the winter solstice. So it will be in usually in February. It's usually a couple of weeks oh, you're around. Right. The, day, the day changes. It changes day because the moon cycles. So you can't pinpoint it to a day. Even so, solar New Year starts usually between February 2nd and 5th or 6th, and it will change each year. And the lunar calendar, of course, the the moon is revolving. So that's a little bit different. So the way I describe it is everyone focuses on the lunar New Year. But remember I talked about that board of directors? Well, they reshuffle every year at the solar New Year. So, for example, February 4th was this year. So February 4th, those new, the board of directors came in and took residence in your home, and that's when 2019 began. But everyone celebrated um, uh, the lunar, which was a little bit later. And it's like Ikea has a grand opening. It opened on February 4th. But no one really saw it, mm-hmm. but it opened its doors, and it started up business. But the big celebration, the grand opening, is the lunar new year. That's the one everyone remembers, but it's already in play. So because you're – so someone's birthday, when we're looking at the year, goes from solar new year to solar new year. So you're January. Yes. So you're actually born year of the ox. 
Okay, because I'm, yeah. I'm before February. You're before February. And it's the most common mistake, and it's an easy, super, I get it why people yeah. think that, but it is incorrect. And it really changes things when we're looking at someone's astrology chart and we're defining their characteristics, okay. if you've got to have it right. It's got to be very accurate. I also take into account whether it's, you were easy because you're a winter birth, but if it's summer, it's where, is there daylight savings in effect? Because that yeah. changes the hour. Uh, some people don't do that, but... I, I strongly believe you do because the clock on the wall is man-made. We, we alter it, right? We go spring forward, we fall back, we change it. The sun and the moon don't follow that, right? So I very much advocate using solar time, not the clock on the wall. The clock on the wall, not to get sidetracked, is used for divination. When we, when we, like if you, were work, you and I were working together and you asked me a question, and you said, Sam, I need to know the outcome or how I how I blend with this company and go into this meeting and what's the strategy. Then I'm looking at Chiman Dunja. Then I look at the clock on the wall the minute you ask me the question. And I pull an energy chart for that moment. That is a big subject. And I'm going to say, please, let's talk about that another day because that needs a whole. Oh, 100%. That's, that's massive. 100%. Yeah, we'll, Chiman Dunja uh, is massive. Yeah. And I wanted to make this one nice and easy for everyone who's just getting to know me. And know that uh, this fun information. We're diving there. deep right away. Yeah. So I am born ox. So that means first thing that means is that I've been reading all of those <laughs> Chinese placemats wrong my whole life. Yes, um, you have. But that's but okay. I'm on the right track now. So you're that's on important. the right track. And what not, does that mean? I'm the ox. Um, well, think about how hardworking you are. OK, so I'm going to make some analogies that are fun because I think they're easy to, for people to remember that way. I'm not being flippant about you or anyone else out there that's listening who's an ox, but I think it's easy to, to paint these pictures. Let's think of an ox working hard, plowing those fields, right? Doesn't stop working, puts its head down and gets it done. So that is, and in your year of birth, that's your, that's your social media, that's your global, that's your far reach. You are very driven, you are very strong, you're very powerful. Okay, it's not a bad thing at all. Some people say, oh, well, the ox is very slow and he's boring and he's not glamorous. No, no, that's just a part of it and it's not really true. I like ox people. They're very dependable, um, very hardworking, very strong. So that's just a little little take. But let's move over a little bit because you're also born month of the ox. Mm -hmm. So you've got two oxes. So there's your drive. There's that determination. There's that I'm not going to, I'm going to be remembered as one of the greats. I'm going to do this, right? That's where that comes from. It's just really strong within you. You're also then, you're then born year of the tiger. So there's your tiger. Yeah, a, a day of the tiger. Sorry, there's your tiger. The tiger's really cool. The tiger is that um, it can pounce, right? It's just think of a tiger in the jungle. It can be out of sight. It can be predatory. Um, it's very fast moving. It has power, again, very different from the ox. That's where sometimes you were saying earlier how you just constantly, your speed is up, your fire is up, like you constantly have energy. That's the tiger. Tiger does not get tired. Ready to go Tiger just goes, 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 goes. And then it's supported by the, the ox. I mean, there's a little bit of uh, sometimes conflict That's there. That's scary. But it's so that means I can't stop working. <laughs> no, no, you're going to be you're going to be good. And then you actually have um, hour of the let me just look at that because it's in Chinese monkey. So you have a monkey. So you have two traveling animals. So let's just touch on the 12 animals. Yes, yeah. yeah. So everyone is familiar usually with the year of their birth. And it's OK if you had the wrong one. Now, you know. Get the right one and go with that. So the year, um, the 12 animals, there's obviously 12 of them. And there's a big funny story about how they became 12 animals. And there should be a 13th one, and it's the cat. But the cat was tricked by the rat. And it's the reason why, to this day, cats chase rats. Because <laughs> Buddha called all the animals. This is the little funny story. Buddha called the animals over to Nirvana. Come, come, Johnny. Kind of like a Noah's Ark kind of thing. And all the animals started coming. And... They're all, they're, they had to cross a river to get there, and the rat um, saw the cat coming, didn't want the cat to get on the boat, so basically tricked the cat, so the cat never crossed the river, never got to Buddha, and that's why they, they fight. Yeah, so there are 12 animals, so but if people say, no, end. there's 13, they're saying that they're referring to the cat. And I often wonder if it's why we see those waving cats in the windows all the time. You know those Chinese the little gold cats with the waving arm? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're everywhere in, in Asia. And I was Kind of like they're saying goodbye or what? Yeah, well, they're activating wealth is usually what they're doing. But, uh, but you've got the 12 animals. So they're, they're divided into three groups. Three of them are cardinals. Okay. That is the rat, the rabbit, the horse, and the rooster. Now define cardinal. Card key directions. Okay. So the rat is north. The rabbit is east. The horse is south, 
and the rooster's west. So cardinal directions. Four of them are graveyard animals and four of them are traveling animals. So I will touch on them, but the traveling animals, meaning if you've got them in your chart, you are someone that's usually going to travel and move and the whole thing. Some, and it, sometimes you might marry someone from another country. There's many things there. So the traveling animals, I want to make sure I get this right, but the traveling animals are the, the tiger, the snake, the monkey, and the pig. So we are in pig year. So this is a year of movement. A lot of people are traveling. A lot of people are moving things around, shifting things in their life. So when you've got these animals in your chart, they bring something. So the last four are the graveyard animals. These are animals of storage. So graveyard doesn't mean death. Graveyard means storage. It's like a crypt. It's like something hidden deep down. Mm -hmm. It's very good to have, but it's very powerful. So when you have, so the four graveyards are the ox, that's one of them, the dragon, the goat, and the dog. Okay, so you, so you have a chart and you could have two animals in your chart because they could duplicate. You could have four animals in your chart, but those animals, how they interact and what they do is what will come forward. So you have two oxes, okay? Those ox, I've just identified that's a graveyard animal. Mm -hmm. So you have these sort of deep talents, very deeply rooted. When something's in the graveyard, it's there and it's protected because it's hidden away. And then when the right thing comes along, it's like you crash it open and you release it. So that's very, very cool for you. And I think we should go have one show just on charts. The other two animals you have are the tiger and the monkey. And they they show me the movement, the fact that you are dynamic. You're going to keep going. You move. You're a, you're a mover and a shaker. Um, you might also marry someone who's from another country. So that would be kind of interesting. I've so, thought about that lots. Interesting. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you probably, probably will. And I say that because I've seen it in my own chart and my son has a similar thing. He's not married yet, but I can see it. And I've seen it with lots of other people. So the animals all, all create something in your chart. So now let's look at where they are, though. So when you're born year of something, so you're born year of the ox, that is your grandparents. That is your global reach. That's your social media. So that represents that. Your month of birth is your life focus. And it's interesting that you're, they repeat, you've got two oxes, so they're the same. So your month of birth is, is your parents. It is your life focus, it is your career, it is what you want to produce. The day you have a tiger is all is you, is all about you, that's how we define you. So when I'm evaluating staff for a company, I look at the day and then I map it all out. And in the hour, so in the, in the day is your significant other, the person you're going to be with um, could be lovers, could be partners, um, could be really good friends as well. And it's your health and your well-being. And then the hour of your birth is all to do with your investments and your children. So some people might say, well, I'm not going to have children. I'm like, okay, well, investments. And if you have children, well, that's just blown your investments, hasn't it? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's my, yeah, they do. <laughs> so all the, all the, uh, I have two. Um, the animals in the chart mean more than just a hardworking ox or a fun-loving tiger or a monkey that swings through the trees. They're a bit lighthearted when I explain them that way, but they all mean something to you. And in the guide, I mapped out a little bit each year for what it means. So I'm just curious. Let's look at this guide. I'm curious now, what, what did I write about ox? I got to actually go and have a check. I'm just going to have a look. I got to find it. Year of the pig. Hold on. Where are you? Right. Okay. Let's see what 2000. So here's what I brings. wrote. I didn't know you, but let's just see if any of it applies. So this is generic. This isn't looking at your chart. This is just right. saying ox. So I said 2019 is going to make you look back over your shoulder to evaluate where you've been, where you are now, and where you want to go. I suggest you clear your vision as it could be a bit blurry. Don't want you losing your way. Be mindful of chasing material happiness because that's not where it is. Such a veer will take you off task and waste your time. What's your spending? As is it a want or a need? Big difference, right? At work, you'll need to put the time in with your boss and show your A game. It's focus time. So that's just one part of you. And I don't know if you can relate to any of that or what you've been doing. Now I know your chart. I would look at the tiger a little bit more. So, but that's just fun. But those are the kind of things I've put in there on the 12 animals. What does the tiger say? Let's find our tiger. All right. I know you can be fierce, but maybe hold that back just a bit because that tongue of yours could take, may have to be taken down a notch. Communication will be your go word, so make your words count, please. Eyes are on you in 2019, so make sure yours dazzle to match. If colleagues or friends seem to bug you, try seeing their point of view. You'll be glad you opened your eyes slightly wider. There will be guidance when you need it, so don't worry if you feel a tad lost in the jungle. Don't. It's not your turn at Jumanji. So I'm being a bit cheeky. Um, 
So if I look at your chart, just the activity you've got, and I look at where you are in your life right now, you just transitioned last year. This is my take on you. Just You went from a different period of time into another one. So I think a lot changed last year. I don't know if that's true. You're going to have to give me some, some little tidbits to go on here. Did you make some big changes last year or something came forward that was different? In 2018? Mm-hmm. Um... Well, I mean, in 2017 was when I took over a business. Right. Um, 2018 would have been... Oh, that makes sense. Sorry, yeah, 2017, yes, because it's a major shift now where you were before too, and it all changed around yeah. the end of 2017. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so 2000, yeah, around clo- getting close to the end of 2017 is when I, uh, when I took over the business and finally left... Uh, a job and it was the first time where I was just relying on business income to actually survive. Yeah. So that was so a, a bit of a leap a of faith. Sh- yeah, big shift. Yes. And yeah. what it was is you changed luck pillars and luck pillars are 10 year blocks of time. And when they change, usually stuff happens, kind of big things, big shifts happen. Yeah. Um, you've probably been making major connections. You're probably bringing people together. Yes. Yes. That's usually well, that's what I'm seeing in your chart as I look at it right now, because you were in a period of time where the dog has come forward and the dog and the ox they're, they're all about combining. Mm-hmm. They're all about getting together and bringing people. And you have your month and your year the same, right? So it's very interesting. So you are probably connecting with people far away and local. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's a good uh, thing. It's a good <laughs> thing. Yeah. No, so. that's, uh, that's, that's just interesting, uh, interesting tidbit because it's accurate. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Cause I'm just I kidding. have a, no, I have a, um, I have a project with a, uh, uh, with a developer out of Ukraine right now. Oh, fantastic. And okay. my investors are in Alberta. Perfect. So that's uh, those are the far away connections. And if we think about, like I wrote these these little um, horoscope things, all eyes are on you. So, be, you know, they're watching to see how you communicate and get those. Um, and that you might have, you might need some guidance. It's okay because there's probably a little bit of pressure on you to perform. And you sometimes when that happens, people don't want to put their hand up and say, I need help. It's Okay. Um, this year, especially year of the pig, it's okay to put a hand up and say, I need a little bit of help. Um, you have a lot of something called resource coming to you with the pig. The pig brings something to you. So it's allowing you to say, yes, I can do this. Yes, this is doable. But it might push you really fast. So it's good to just take a breath every now and then and, and do that. So that's, that's really good. I'm excited for you. And of course, you know, well, no, you don't know because you weren't here. Shelby and I were talking last time and... Uh, I've had your charts for a while, of course. I didn't have your hour. You just gave that to me the other I week. I did, yeah. But I, I evaluated you guys quite a while back before you started here. So I know you're going places. I know you're at the base of something really quite good. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and another thing that I remember you touched on in the first episode was how uh, facial reading is a big part of what you do. Yes. And how you couldn't read my face from the first meeting because of my hat. I couldn't, no, it was very difficult. So we had our first meeting, which is very specific why we we met when we did and where we did. But I had done some reconnaissance on social media, as I do, because stuff is out there. And I had quite a few different pictures of you. And I actually came into Real one day and I said, I'm confused because these pictures are quite different and I'm trying to do a reading and I'm really getting a little bit lost here. I've, I'm going to have to meet this guy. And he said, well, great. Well, we'll set up a meeting. And we needed to meet anyway. And then when we came in the meeting, you were very fired up. You, were, I could tell you were just like, this is going to be great. And you were very excited, but you kept moving. You were moving a lot and you had a cap, which is quite low to your eyebrows. And I'm sitting there and I'm trying to get low in my chair and I'm, and I'm going down. And every time I got down, I'd see your face. Then you'd move and I'm like, damn it. And I'd go back and I'd move again. And I was like, shit, this is not working. So Rial was laughing because he knew what I was doing. He knew what you oh, were doing. Of course he knew and what I had no, no, See, I looking had no back, I can't, even, I can't even think if I remember you even going lower like that. But it's oh, so yeah, funny to hear this I, back. I, I would sort of, I leaned back in my chair <laughs> and I was just watching. And whereas um, Shelby was sitting quite still, he was between us. And I, it was easy. I got to see his profile. I could see, so he was an easier evaluation. Mm-hmm. You were tougher for me to, to pin down. So when was the point where you actually got me? I think when I got your hour. When you got my hour? Yeah. Because I'm curious because we, we saw each other again at an Okanagan Spirits event. I believe yep. it was for Coldwell Banker, right? Yep, it was. Yeah. Was I wearing a hat there? I can't remember. You weren't wearing a hat, but you came up. And if you remember, we did chat for a little bit, but we didn't chat for very long. I wasn't sure what to think of you at that point, so I was keeping my distance. And you were still quite gung-ho, and, and, and you still had that lovely spirit that you have, and you were really gung-ho, but I wasn't sure how I felt. Because you hadn't read me yet. 
I hadn't finished reading you. I'd started, but something wasn't jiving. So we have something in our charts that does connect. But to give you an example, the um, you are born year of the ox and month of the ox. Well, I have a goat in my chart. It's the day. The day of my birth has a goat in it. So it's just one piece of my chart. The goat and the ox are opposite. So I didn't take to you right away because we're just opposite ends of the spectrum. So it took me a while to warm up to you. Whereas um, Shelby, not that he's the best thing since sliced bread, but he has something else in his chart that connected. Right. So right away. Immediately. Immediately. However, what you have in your chart is still good. We meld really well. We give each other something that we need. Um, you And I said this to Shelby because you have very similar charts, interestingly enough. What I bring to you and Shelby and Clinton is something that will allow you guys to really elevate. I'm not the reason you'll be successful. You'll be successful by your own merit. I will just help you. I will give you something you're actually missing. So the connection is there. And that's when we decided to do these podcasts because I could see that you guys bring something to me that is useful, but I bring something to you. So if it was just one way, say it was just you, you guys are going to be going to make me famous. Oh, it's going to be great. It's all about Sam, blah, 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 blah. That's all well and dandy, but it's not how I work. I never work that way. It's always a two-way street. That's who I choose to work with. We should enhance each other. Yep. A win-win so, situation. Yeah. I knew things from your face. I knew you were honest and trustworthy. I just knew there was an inner speed that you have that I didn't know if I could work with because I have it too. Mm -hmm. I, have a, I have a lot of fire in my chart, so I'm all speed. over the place. So yeah. Real has had to really work on me and keep me focused and yeah. just ground me. So I sort of thought, oh, boy, you and I could get into a booth and we'll just talk for like three hours because we I, will just feed. That's what I was concerned with about this episode, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we'll feed off each other. And that's when yeah. – and that's okay, but it's, also, it's not always productive, right? So we have yeah. to be careful. Absolutely. So that's, that's what that's about. So birth charts are really interesting, and I've written the 12 animals out. Yeah, they're a little bit generic and they're a little bit fun because I don't know you. You're listening, I, but you can pull your chart up. Also, you can if you don't know your birth chart, go to chartologypro.com. And in the astrology section, you'll see a little calculator, which is an online calculator. Enter your birth date, enter your gender, click calculate. It's going to tell you the four animals you've got in your chart and then compare it to the guide. So just like you did with me, you're very on the ball. I can tell that. You asked, you looked at the ox. You wanted me to read it because you're born year of the ox, a month of the ox. But we also read the tiger. And we should technically read the monkey as well because those are the components in your chart. You're not just the year. I always say to people, the year you're born, a year is 365 days long. So that's one 365th of you. It's a pretty important part, but it's one. The month, that's one twelfth of you. The day, that's you. That's you. So, so when we're doing, when I'm doing any Bartzer work, which is a Chinese astrology work, I focus on the day. So you have a pillar called uh, Jia Yin, which is Yang Wood Tiger. So that's very strong. It's very strong. And that's why that's like a very, very, very tall, strong tree. And that's where the guidance comment came in here. A tree is great, but it can, it, to grow really tall, it needs uh, fertilizing, it needs water, it needs sunshine. And those come from the outside. They don't come from the inside. So there will be, there will be mentors in your life that come forward. And um, they may, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You might butt heads with them occasionally. Just bow your let head a little bit. Let, <laughs> let them fertilize you. Let them, let, listen to what they're saying. It may not make sense right away, but it will. You don't have to sell who you are. You don't have to not be your authentic self. But you, you, know, you have a lot of power in your chart. You have, you have great vision. And when I read your quote about you want to be remembered as one of the greats, yeah, you probably will be. Sure. So if you have the right. Where did you read that? You said it somewhere on social media. Is in an article. It isn't an article. When I was yeah. stalking you online, yeah. I went and read all the you articles. You Googled me, hey? I did. Of course I Googled yeah. you. Yeah. Interestingly, interestingly enough, I don't Google my clients. Yeah. Um, working people, yes. If I'm going to work with someone, I Google them, I get their birth info, I check it out. When I'm working with clients, I don't because sometimes it biases me. If I read something on f social media and then they say, oh, you only said that because you saw my post on Facebook. I'm like, nope. No, I didn't. Don't even know you yet. I will, but I you interesting, know. and I I like that uh, I like that aspect as well because you go in mm -hmm. like you said and in, in and up from an unbiased position. It's really important because you we we we, we do get biased by what we mm -hmm. read on social media. I'm just human, just like you. I'm going to be you know swayed 
by something. So I actually usually shut down and I don't do that. I just pull my chart, get my little colored pens out and I color it and I work it out and then I start working things down. So it's good to know because 2019 is year of the pigs. So if we, if we connect it back to the guide, the reason I want you to go get the guide is because it's going to help you walk through the feng shui aspect right, that we talked about, which is um, areas to use. But there's also a whole area in there about areas not to disturb. So not to renovate, not to knock a wall down, not to put a door in because it's going to cause issues for you. So that's in there and it's really important to grab just for that. Then the astrology, sure, okay, that's a little bit cheeky and fun and it's in there, but it might explain some things because we're halfway through the year now. So when I usually put these guides out, it's at the beginning of the year. And, and sometimes my, my, I send them out to my friends to, to proofread and they'll come back and say, oh, yeah, no, but it's, it's great, Sam. I really like what you wrote, but yeah, it's not, you know, it's not happening for me. And I'm like, well, hang on a minute. It's January. The year hasn't even begun yet. It's just shifting. The year is going to take hold in February. Then you need a few months for it to all take hold. So the astrology guide is really handy because if you pick it up now, you'll be able to say, oh, okay, maybe it's not my best year. That's why I'm experiencing that. I just got to. Take back. It a helps. little bit of understanding. It helps people become self-aware and sometimes validates. And sometimes you have a bad year, but it ends. It's just mm. 12 months. won't last forever. Yeah. So it's, it's good to know. So I like these guides to go out and, and help people because sometimes you just need to someone to say, hey, it's just a moment. It's just a yeah. moment in time. Just a moment in time. It's just a moment in time. Oh, I like that a lot. And we've touched on uh, a lot of good topics today on uh, feng shui. I'm happy I at least got to know how to pronounce that. <laughs> very good, at by the, very the way. Least. Yes. Oh, the bok choy thing really helped. I got to say, it? that's perfect. I'm good at that. The, when I teach feng shui, I'm good at, I'm really good at teaching the beginners because I have these little funny analogies. That's what got me in trouble with my school initially, though, uh -huh. I have to admit. But I only do it so people remember because you'll remember that, right? Yeah. I'll remember that forever now. Exactly. And we so. got into some good information on the signs, which is awesome, but... Yeah, As I just you... yeah, I just wanted this one to be about 2019. I mean, there's yep. so many things. I'd like to delve deeper into astrology and we'll do that or do a little bit more. Well, I don't want to always talk about you and make you feel uncomfortable. I don't want you to <laughs> not want to sit with me in the studio, but um You it's, know what's strange helpful. though? People love talking about themselves or hearing about themselves. Of course, <laughs> we all do. We all do. Yeah. So, myself no. myself included in that. But yeah. no, it's been it's been really cool to hear a few of those things. I'm definitely going to read uh definitely going to read the monkey as soon as we wrap up here and <laughs> As, as you mentioned, uh, us being both being fires, we could talk for hours. We can. Absolutely yes, hours. Yes, we can. And that's another thing. We'll talk about the elements and what it means. So we'll, I think astrology is an area we'll really open up. Yeah. We'll really expand 100%. that. So we just want to get everyone to get to know. I just want to get to know you right now and so that you know you can come and we can have nice chats. Wonderful. Yeah. And, no, I love that a lot. And uh, for everyone else, please get the guide because, like I said, we could chat for hours, uh, but we won't. Uh, we won't do that. So not today. We'll, not today. <laughs> not we will, today. We will chat again. But yeah, yeah please get the uh, the guide. It is 100% absolutely free. If I'm not wrong, it is. Yep. Yeah, we just make a membership. It's all free. I'm I'm all about giving things away. So just go to www.chelogypro.com and create a free account and there's other resources about peach blossom which is romance there's all sorts of things you can get there there's a bunch of free courses it's a limitless supply of information actually and then you know you can find us on instagram facebook youtube we've always got something going on so just come join the community i'm here for you wonderful thank you so much sam oh you're welcome thanks so much david <laughs>